And the report come to the ears of the church in Jerusalem, and they sent Barnabas to Antioch. Here, here's the, the key thing is you get a move of God happening in a city in Antioch. And by the way, Antioch, if you follow the history, which is not all in Scripture, but the history of the church, Antioch became one of the most powerful churches. It kept an influence for hundreds of years. Mm -hmm. So you've got this move of the Lord that's starting. Who do they send? They send the son of encouragement. Yeah, I mean, you thought Peter, John. Yeah, you'd have thought James, send the big, send somebody, the heavyweights. Yep, send the heavyweights. <laughs> the one, you know, that kind of thing. And they send Barnabas. I never, I, I had never realized that. Yeah. So they they send the son of encouragement into right? the midst of the move of the Spirit of God. Encouraging people presents the Harvest Time podcast with Dr. Joe Wadlinger and Pastor Bill Baldwin. Hi, I'm Dr. Joe Wadlinger with Encouraging People, and you are watching the Harvest Time podcast with Pastor Bill Baldwin. Our topic this week is a follow-up of the message Pastor Bill preached this past Sunday on encouragement. And if you haven't watched that yet, we really encourage you to get that. That was kind of a pun. Encourage you to do that as it's a message that every believer should hear, but has probably never heard like this before. Uh, we'll provide a link in the description below. Or you can go to our website at encouragingpeople.com and watch it there. Bill, this part of uh, the Engage, Encourage, Equip, and Power series that you've been teaching, um, I thought this message, the message on engaging your world was absolutely amazing, but this one was off the charts. And when you said that you were studying for this message and it was way deeper than you thought before, <laughs> yeah. what did you mean by that? Well, I, I think uh, the more you dig in, the more I dug into it, um, I think the depth came when I, I hit, I called him the man of encouragement, Barnabas. Uh, actually, Barnabas means the son of encouragement. I call him the man of encouragement. When I hit that and saw how, how um, that the whole, it, it's hard to believe it, the whole New Testament, the, the New Testament church was founded upon the foundation of this encouragement that came out of one man named Barnabas, which we we see him as one of the lesser guys. Yeah, I mean we see him as as like he's the second stringer, you yeah. know. <laughs> yeah. But but he was before Paul. That's true. And if it had not been, and we might go there in a little bit, if it had not been for Barnabas, we wouldn't even know who who Paul, much less Saul of Tarsus. We wouldn't know who the Apostle Paul was because he was in Tarsus and would have stayed there had it not been for this guy. So when I saw him and and went in that direction, and of course, you know, when we got there in the message, we kind of camped right there and ended there. But everything everything encapsulates around that. And I think the gift of encouragement is the foundation that the body of Christ is built upon for all the other gifts to be to be functional. And even for people to even realize what their gift is. Um, yeah. So right. it went to another depth when I came to him. Well, you, you started off with Hebrews chapter 10. And this, this part that really was really amazed me was stirring up one another. I really didn't know <laughs> what that meant yeah. until you brought it out. And so tell us what that what that means. What does stirring up one another yeah, really well, mean? Well, it's if if you go I think it's in the in the old King James version that many of us don't look at anymore, but it's important to go back and look at it sometime because they do give some unique translations that we tend to forget about. It literally does mean stirring up, but it also means to provoke. That's a whole nother level of stirring <laughs> up. <laughs> provoke, when you are provoked, it means you are pushed into something that previously you didn't even think about doing, saying, acting out, etc. cetera. Yeah, you're challenging somebody. Challenging. Like, like you're poking, like it's a poking yeah, beehive. You're, you're provoking right, it. Right, like, you're provoking okay, it. Yeah. Do something about this. So, yeah, uh, provoking, stirring up one another. Yeah. To, so that that whole thing, and of course that whole scripture, and and uh, you will find out, every time I come to the book of Hebrews, anytime I take a passage of Hebrews, or speak from any portion of it, it seems like I always, always preface it with telling the folks that Hebrews was written to a group of believers who were obviously Jews who were giving up 
They were going to quit. They mm-hmm. were throwing in the towel. And the writer could have been the, could have been the Apostle Paul, but some say no. But whoever it was, the writer was going back and grabbing the Old Testament passages and the Old Testament theology, putting it in front of them and basically saying, look, you've got to keep sacrificing animals and the bull and the blood of bulls and goats will not forgive sin. There's been one sacrifice and this is Christ. And that one passage that says that there's no other way, if you, if you neglect this, there is no other way to be saved. He's, he's referring to Christ. There's no other way. If you think you can go back to your old way of life in Judaism because it's safer, then if you go back, you remain in your sins mm-hmm. because the only sacrifice is Christ. So that whole passage uh, comes into view in what I was using here in, in Hebrews chapter 10, where he encourages, he, he says that he provokes them to good works, mm-hmm. but he encourages, he brings the word in there at that last part of that, that in chapter 10, he says he's encourage, encouraging them in order per, to prepare them for, and here's this word, the day. And that's mm-hmm. all, the day is it always in caps. Mm-hmm. And so many people talk about that day being the coming of Christ or the whatever. Well, it doesn't explain, but it means a day that is significant, significantly uh, maybe harder, maybe uh, maybe it is the coming of the Lord, whatever, but he's encouraging them to walk out their faith until they get to the day. And so what was the key word there that's going to get them to and through the day? It's encouraging. Mm-hmm. And, and the thing is, is that Barnabas means, it can be interpreted as son of encouragement, son of exhortation, son of the prophets. And I always wondered that son of the prophets thing. How does that work in? But when you talked about what the actual definition of encouragement was, that's right. It, as far as provoking, that's more of an exhortation. But it's also you were talking about the modern day prophet versus the Old Testament prophet. Mm-hmm, right. Can you you can enlighten that a little bit? Because I thought that was very interesting. Yeah. Well, you know the First Corinthians fourteen three says that prophecy is given. For the, reason, for the purpose of, and this is, I think, the NIV interprets it, strengthening, encouraging, and comforting. In other words, when a word from the Lord comes, and this is a New Testament uh, prophetic utterance, or, or I could even say part of a prophet, uh, when, the New Test- when the word comes from a, um, in a prophetic form like that in, in a New Testament sense, it will strengthen, it will courage, and it will comfort. Uh, it will comfort. That doesn't mean it takes the edge if it's a kind of a sharp word, because sometimes you do have sharp words. Mm-hmm. I mean, sometimes it is get away from that sin. Mm-hmm. But that's an encouraging word if you see the end result. If you don't get away from it and lay it down. So um, yeah, that's that that idea of of prophecy comes in also incur is the word encouraging uses the idea of encouraging. Mm -hmm. So you've get all of that, all that together that, uh, the son of Bar, uh, the, um, Barnabas also means a son of encouragement, but also means it also includes the word prophet there, Mm -hmm. which means that as you prophesy, it's going to encapsulate also encouraging as well as all the other that comes with it. And, and, you know, um, just, I think it was just like a month ago, I think I even talked about it on one of our podcasts, the preaching thing. People say, well, you're, you're, a, pre- you're a preacher. And I'm like, nah, I'm a preacher. Until I saw that uh, someone had sent me a text and they said, preaching is not just speaking out words. It's different from teaching. Teaching is informational. Preaching is trying to get somebody to move from where they are to where they should be. Mm-hmm. And that's exactly what exert- encouragement is. Yeah, it's you sure. encourage them mm-hmm. they're where they're not supposed to be they're, they're where they're supposed to be. And so I just thought, well, this is, you know, yeah, I guess I am because that's what I'm always doing, motivating people. So this is the provoking is encouragement to get them, provoke them, poke them and say, hey, you're asleep. You know, it's about, right. you're, you're in slumber, yeah. Yeah. right? And so you need to wake up and move to where you're supposed to be. And so that's that's the thing. But the, the thing is, we don't have that many encouragers in the body of Christ, right? I think, I think the other thing is, is we see encouragement as such a um, attaboy. Yeah, yeah, just, yeah you yeah, can do attaboy. that. Just just that kind of a, um, a shallow, yeah. 
you know, yeah. uh, somebody with a sanguine personality that is like just happy clappy, you know, kind of a yeah. person. The, oh, by far. Again, if you read the New Testament, encouragement is actually foundational to the body of Christ becoming, and I'm talking about individually and corporately, becoming who we're called to be. Yeah. But without that, without that, the other gifts will not operate. Right. Well, speak to Barnabas in that, because that was kind of a, 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 a midpoint in your in your lesson, your, me, your message was how Barnabas was instrumental in the birth of the church. Yeah, right? well... Um, I think it was Acts chapter, let me look at my notes here to yeah, see where we're absolutely. at here. Acts 11, I believe, was looking at. Acts 11, it says, let me just read this if mm -hmm. I could, this scripture. Oh, Acts 11, 19 through 23 says, Now that there were those who were scattered because of the persecution that arose over Stephen, travel, and which that, by the way, was the persecution of Stephen. If you'll look in Acts 7, it was because of Saul of Tarsus, you know, that he was the kingpin and all of that. But it traveled as far as Phoenicia and Cyprus and Antioch. But there were some of them, men of Cyprus and Cyrene, who were coming to Antioch, spoke to the Hellenists, also preaching the Lord Jesus. At the hand of the Lord, and the hand of the Lord was with them, and a great number who believed turned to the Lord. And the report came to the ears of the church in Jerusalem, and they sent Barnabas to Antioch. Here, here's the, the key thing is you get a move of God happening in a city in Antioch. And by the way, Antioch, if you follow the history, which is not all in scripture, but the history of the church, Antioch became one of the most powerful churches. It kept an influence for hundreds of years. Mm -hmm. So you've got this move of the Lord that's starting. Who do they send? They send the son of encouragement. Yeah. I mean, you thought Peter, John. Yeah. You would have thought, James, send the, big, send the heavyweights. Yep. Send the heavyweights. <laughs> the one, you know, that kind of thing. And they send Barnabas. I never, I, I had never realized that. Yeah. So they, they send the son of encouragement. Into right? the midst of the move of the spirit of God. Mm -hmm. And the scripture says, it goes on and says this, and he came and watch this. He ca there's something about Romans 12 tells us that one of the spiritual gifts is encouragement. Uh, and of course, some people say, "Well, the, the spiritual gifts are First Corinthians twelve. That's well, that's part of that's the gifts of the Holy Spirit. But there are further gifts that are mentioned mm -hmm. in Romans chapter twelve. Mm -hmm. One of those are, are is encouragement. And it says he came, and when he came, that he saw the grace of God, and he was glad. There's something about the, these guys. These guys that have a gift of encouragement." They're thrilled on the inside because they recognize the Lord on people. And he was glad. And it says, and he exhorted, or the other word is, he encouraged them to remain faithful to the Lord and steadfast. Well, obviously, Antioch got it because they did remain faithful to the Lord and steadfast for hundreds of years. You made a, you made a point, though, that encouragers have this unique ability to be able to see what God's doing in someone. They almost see what the future could hold for that person if they were encouraged. And that's 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 a gifting that we need in the church because a lot of times we just say, oh yeah, they're coming to the church. Well, they need to go through discipleship and they're going to, you know, that kind of stuff. But encouragers see something that God shows them in that person that's a gem that they're mining out. That's a, that's, that's, so, that's the deal. That's that's part of the gift. Yeah. <clears throat> we, think, we think the gift is... Uh, encouragement means that there's somebody who sees sad people and they go and lift them up. Mm. Well, that's part of it, certainly. I mean, but there's there's something far deeper because people who carry this gift of encouragement, they see the gift of God in other people and they encourage, or you use the other translation of the word, they exhort them until they see that gift mature. Mm -hmm. Can we talk about where he saw... Because we've got this move of God going on. Let's go back Absolutely. to the scripture. <laughs> Absolutely. Acts 11, the move of the Lord's happening in Antioch. So you've got Barnabas who goes down, checks it out, and says, wow. He, so he sees the grace of God going on, encourages the church. Well, here's the further walk of the Lord. Watch this. It's Acts 11. It keeps going. Verse 25. So Barnabas went to Tarsus to look for Saul. Now we don't have the we don't have all the backstory here. There's a big gap. But Saul of Tarsus, the church feared. 
Mm-hmm. I mean, yeah. I would too. Yeah. I'm not knocking that. I mean, if you if you heard of somebody who was, um, in this case, he was a religious terrorist or a political terrorist, whatever it happens to be, if you heard of somebody doing that, we would fear them too. Mm-hmm. You know, we would have the, the the security guys at the door. You know, and yeah, especially say, somebody who was who was going around identifying people and had them thrown in jail, and some of them ha- being stoned, and them stoned, yeah. killing them. I mean, that's like, yeah. uh, no, thank you. Right, that's right, <laughs> completely. But we've but Barnabas knows his life, saw him come to the Lord. Obviously, he's still raw, mm-hmm. as all new believers are. But in the midst of this move of God, I, I think this, I think, I think Barnabas looks into the life of Saul of Tarsus and says he saw something in him that, first of all, he was not, he was not a shallow Jew. Right. Saul of Tarsus was right. not. He looks into his life and he sees something in him that nobody else sees, uh, certainly the church. Right. So in the midst of a move of God, it says that he goes to Tarsus. Obviously, Saul has gone back to his hometown, Saul of Tarsus. So he goes back to Tarsus. We don't know why or whatever, but that's where he's at. And it is a quite a journey from where Barnabas is to where Tarsus is. He goes to Tarsus, and it says, when he found him, meaning when he finds Saul, he brought him into the move of God in Antioch. Mm-hmm. For a whole year, they met with the church and taught a great many people. Again, that little sentence right there in verse 26, there is so much in that because we don't hear the backstory. They taught the church. You know who else is getting taught? Barnabas is teaching Saul of Tarsus everything he knows yes, in Jesus. Exactly. So Saul is getting his foundational, um, his foundational teaching right there on the job in a move of God, in a raw move mm-hmm. of God in Antioch. And he's also teaching him how to be an encourager. Because you find at the end of Paul's life, he's encouraging. We pray for you every day. We think yeah. of you every day. That's we, good. You right? never thought of that. He That's becomes great. in the end of his life, he becomes a true encourager. I'm in. I'm in jail for you. Mm-hmm. He's he's talking about that. So. It's very interesting, and, and what's also interesting is nowadays, if if the church or the denomination or whatever sends somebody to a town or whatever, they go, oh, this is mine. Okay. Right. Um, they don't look at what is God doing here and say, oh, that person would be great to do that, because we have this thing where we want to be the main man. And Paul and Barnabas was always, he was always submissive. In that way, he was apostle. It says he was an apostle, no doubt. Yep. but he was always submissive to let Paul be able to be the one that had used his talents and abilities. And Barnabas kept his encouragement. And we find out later that he goes around and encourages the churches again and stuff yeah. like that. So that whole thing of we need to change our mindset about when when we're in a new territory, a new person comes into the congregation. It's not like we're going to use this person. It's like how can we encourage? Who can see into this person? Who can we bring alongside this person to encourage this person and mine out those things? And and if we see that, hey, this would be better for Phil or this would be better for Jim or whatever. We, hey, would you come over and, and he, let me introduce you guys together and see what the synergy is. But we don't have that mindset because we want to be the man. That's not that's not what yeah. God wants. Yeah. And I, I think the other thing is we don't the, mind, the look at what's going on here. For a whole year, they met with the church and told a great many people. You you read that and. There's this, there's this tendency with us, and we've done this. It's been, it's been with us so long mm-hmm. that I don't. It's going to be tough to break, uh, and I don't know. I don't know if it's breakable or not, or if it's whatever, um, or if it needs to be. I think there needs to be a mind shift, and I think this is. It's when you've got, when you've got people that that like myself. We're over a congregation, but I don't have all the goods. Right, and I'm okay, and I'm okay, I'm fine. I'm at a I'm in an age that I don't need to prove anything. I, I've had the big church in town. Know what that is? Or know what that's like? It kind of like it's not it's not the big hunk of cheese that people have made it out to be. 
because if you've got if you've got a thousand babies or you've got a thousand people, and fifty percent of them are kind of like babies, where I am right now, I want I want to have people that when the day comes, <laughs> whatever that however you want to see what the day is, mm-hmm. look at Hebrews chapter ten. When the day comes, I want to have done my <clears throat> done my role in encouraging them mm-hmm. to be steadfast with Jesus, not to just be a you know make one of my seats warm and be a number in there. So they were together, and while they were together, they met. You've got Saul of Tarsus meeting with Barnabas, and in that context, with this discipling going on. It's not a mistake that in Antioch, the, the remainder of that verse says, that's where they first called them Christians. Right. Which means yeah. nothing more than, well, they're just like little Christs. Mm-hmm. And it was a derogatory term. It was. But they embraced it. Like, they embraced yeah, it. Like, yeah, you're right. That's right. We are. That's We're right. just like him. <laughs> you know? They, they, they took it as a, as a compliment eventually, mm-hmm. you know? So, yeah. Well, and it's also, they met with them and preached and taught for a year. We have to realize the, the calling of God is seasonal. It's 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 not forever. And a lot of times we become entrenched and we've been at the same. I'm not talking about going to a church. I'm talking about what God's purpose for your life is. Yeah, for sure. And and it could be He brings you to one to one group of people and you're there and God says, okay, you've done everything you can. You've raised up other people because that's what encouragers do. They raise other people up, and that's what they did in the churches. They'd go to a they Barnabas and. Paul would go to a church. They'd raise up elders and everything, and then they move on to the next place, and they and they and then they would go back and encourage them some more, and bring them up some more, and write letters to them. And so, we we can't get our feet in concrete that this is where we're going to stay. We have to constantly before the Lord is, am, am I still of value here, doing what I'm doing here? Um, is there another somebody else that you want me to raise up to do what I'm doing so that you can take me someplace else? And it could also be with Barnabas. Everybody, or at least who we know that he raised up or that he discipled with his gift of encouragement, they all outdid him. Mm -hmm. Uh, Mm -hmm. Saul became Paul, Mm -hmm. the apostle. Uh, Of course, we talked about in Acts chapter 15 where uh, they were going on a missionary journey. Holy Spirit said, set apart. And Barnabas wanted to take John Mark. Of course, John Mark, you know, sputtered out on one of the missionary journeys and threw in the gloves on that and went home. Paul didn't want to take him. Of course, that's where you've got you got Paul and Barnabas come to a, a heated disagreement mm-hmm. because Barnabas, his gift was operating, and he wants to take Mark. He he don't think that he don't think Mark's finished. Right. So they part ways. Barnabas teams up with Mark whom he has to encourage in the faith again to encourage him to keep moving on. And Paul takes Silas. Mm -hmm. So now you've got another apostolic team that has developed out of a disagreement, but God uses it. Of course, we know the story of Paul and Silas in jail singing. It's interesting that Silas, see, see Barnabas encouraged Paul and he became who he was supposed to be. Silas was a prophet. Yeah, he, that's did, he right. was not another was. encourager he, yes, because right. now you that have Paul true. who's learning how to encourage, yeah. Yeah. and so he needed that for the next leg of his journey. So I don't believe that it was the devil doing that. I think it was God. Just like they in Jerusalem, they were all trying to stay there, and and persecution came to get them out. Sometimes God uses that kind of thing to to make, to drive people into their purpose. He does. And so you're right. I mean, and if it wouldn't have been for Barnabas doing that, what we wouldn't have the book of Mark. Mark. <laughs> so I th- I think this gift, this gift is so deep and so selfless. I thought about that recently after, after even after uh, preaching this, I thought of, I, I thought about selfishness, and I'm yeah. thinking about myself. I'm thinking about how selfish sometimes we can be for. Wanted to make sure that our that we're not discounted among the whole, among the body, mm-hmm. among the family, and that's 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 kind of huge among us. And I don't I don't think it's just a an American church thing. I think it's a human thing. So you, you're probably going to find it even in the tough spots of the world. It's a human nature thing. But that, that's what makes this this gift of encouragement in people so powerful 
is that they will encourage one that eventually outshines them in so many different ways of the gospel. But here we've got, we come back in the scripture and you look and you think, wow, you know, Barnabas just kind of slowly disappears Mm -hmm. as it unfolds. Mm -hmm. But my, if, if Barnabas had not gone to Tarsus, and have pulled Saul out and brought him to Antioch where the move of God was taking place, we may not, and I only say may not because God's got other ways. He's not Mm -hmm. strapped with one person, but we may not have the New Testament as we know it today. Mm -hmm. And and the Gentiles. I mean, Paul was used. He became the apostle to Also the Gentiles. And and you look at Barnabas, he started off that way, right? Because we first see Barnabas where? And what, what did he do? Where, 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 where is he first mentioned? Well, he was first mentioned, was the Acts 4? He was Joseph. That, mm-hmm. Joseph was his real name. Right. Just why I like him so much. And the, <laughs> and, and the church called, the, actually, it was, his, it was a nickname. Mm-hmm. Uh, they called him Barnabas, Bar, which is the, it meant, you know, it's the son of encouragement. Mm-hmm. And um, so it, he, it actually, he began as a nickname to him, mm-hmm. but that's, but the rest of the Bible, the rest of the New Testament knows him as his gift. But he, but he, it says, the first thing it says about him is he had a piece of land. Yeah, that's right. That he sold and gave it. That's right. He yeah. took of his, he must have been a fairly wealthy person if he had land. Um, he gave it, the, what the, the proceeds of that to the church. That was one of those, to the, the first acts that we see of yeah. him doing that is taking, is sacrificing for the needs of others. And, right? and, and, it, and it, created, it created quite a, um, a momentum mm-hmm. among the body during that time because others began to do that same thing because of his encouragement mm-hmm. to do it. And so. it, became, it actually became kind of a thing of like, well, you know, I'm going to do that. Ananias and Sapphira, if you haven't read that story, read it again about how they wanted to have the appearance of that. And, and uh, that didn't turn out too well for them. <laughs> um, but, you know, um, you, you also said that encouraging is a community project yeah. for the church. And, I, and, I, and that's some, it's not we have a couple of encouragers in the church. It's that the church needs to come together as a team to encourage that doesn't mean that you that you have that gifting of encouragement, but you your talents and things can can work together to identify people, bring people in, see where they need to fit in encouragement, and I really believe that that's that's the main job of the church is not to get people saved and bring them in and just throw them over your shoulder and say okay next, but we take those things and say guy God you brought this person in they're a baby we need to bring build this person up we need to encourage them we used to take spiritual gifting tests and all that kind of yeah. stuff but but you know, encouragers can actually see where this person is and they and they and they and they and they sacrifice their time for that person i mean jesus did it right he had his three that's right and then he had his 12 that's right and then he had his his other grouping you know the 70 and then eventually you know it grew and grew and grew but he 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 poured himself into people a little bit at a time Mm -hmm. and that's and that's what god will lay on our hearts is he will he will put us in people's uh purview and 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 that we can encourage them but it's not like you go to church and you just encourage them there and that's it right that's not barnabas did he would continue to work with people and continue to encourage them and so it it is a community thing can you imagine and this was my this was this is my hope for for every for maybe some of you are looking and you've got your own fellowship, your own family, church family. It's my hope for the church, but and certainly my hope for our church family. Can you imagine what would happen as people walk to a gathering of worship in a, a congregation and just the whole atmosphere, and I'm not talking about just the music and just the worship, just that, but the whole atmosphere is one that encourages you to chase after God. Yeah. Encourages you yeah. to like you're sitting there and no matter what no matter what the man it is not even about the sermon and you know the the guy up front. It's I'm so over that. Yeah. You know, it's about the whole atmosphere that 
people in the that's in the family there that they are speaking life to those who are in and and when people walk away they might not even know why but they're just thinking I feel so alive and and, yeah. and the gift and if they're believers they feel alive in who they are as believers if they're not and they walk away then they feel there's something in there that's drawing them to Jesus I just what a gift that would be in yeah. the body of Christ and uh that that's my that's my hope Joe is that is that people, the family of God, that we will grab hold of this, and that when we see people, uh, you know, I when I see people who um, who have a gift within them that might end up being greater than myself, right. that I would fan that thing. Yeah, or 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 a person who, we got to get rid of this idea of like, well, if I get somebody, they're ours. Yeah. They only go to our because, oh, yeah. like Paul, what if he would have kept Titus and Timothy with him? It's like right. he, they branched them out, and so also what another thing you said in your message was it isn't just for inside the church. No, that's right. It you encourage people at Lowe's, you encourage people at Food Line, that's you it. encourage people out there that may never set foot in your church. In fact, I believe that we're just practicing in the church. Yeah, for out there, we're practicing I, in the church. I had today. I had a neighbor. Uh, I was walking. And uh, I think I've told you this before. I, I never invite anybody to my church. I, I never invite, I like to talk about the Lord, but I won't invite anybody to my church but because I'm a pastor. For me, it's, it's not wrong to. If you're a pastor and you're watching, it's not wrong to invite people to your church. This is me. I never do. And I just think it's like, for me, it comes off as wanting to, you know, snag one more person and, but I have a neighbor that I have been around for three years, walking, we talk, we've, been, we've talked, we have moved into talking about the Lord, good people, just good mm-hmm. people. Mm-hmm. They don't go to church. Today they come up and he says, um, Bill, when does your church start? <laughs> what time does it start? I said, 10 o'clock. I said, no, that's not a Sunday school because sometimes traditionally it's a Sunday school hour. Right. I said, we start singing and worshiping at 10 o'clock. And that's all he said. And that's all I said. The point being is this, is that you will transmit and you will, people will pick up on the spirit you carry. Mm -hmm. And, and the very thing that sometimes we do too early is we try to yank them and pull them in rather than plant seeds of encouragement, plant seeds of love plant seeds, just a seed here and there. And lo and behold, today I saw a little bean pop up yep. and break the soil. Be, be Jesus. You're talking about engaging, you know, the previous time and engage, we engage by being Jesus to our world. That's it. And there was a, a person that I've, I've been ministering to lately and, and I'm just being Jesus to him. That's all. And, and I'll, and just encouraging him and looking inside of him and say, you know, God's got a, God's got a plan for your life. But not inviting him to church or anything like that as far as like, oh, you need to come to my church. Yeah. Because sometimes they don't need to go to your church. Sometimes That's there's right. someplace else That's right. that they would fit better in. Um, and so this this person, you know, I, I haven't been pushing on anything, haven't been like picking at their scabs and stuff like that. And the other day, I think it was several weeks ago, the person said, I want to be like you. That's all. Awesome. I want to be like you. And see... That's what Jesus, what the disciples said when, as a current, as a rabbi normally has is, um, I want to be like him. So I'm yeah. going to be around that person. I'm going to see how they interact and how they act in circumstances and how they are and poke on them and make sure that that's what it is. And, and see, that's what, that's what true witnessing is all about. That's right. It's, it is. it's telling people of what you've seen, what you've heard, what you've experienced, not with somebody else has has experienced unless it's unless you need to say that for instructional purposes but it's really about being jesus to your world because he went about doing good and destroying the works of the devil that's right encouragers destroy the 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 works that god's that that the devil's placed into somebody they rip that out and they replace it with the good things of god that's right so you know just like you said what what would this world would be like if each group of people, each ecclesia, um, would 
just make this their mission. Mm-hmm. We're going to be encouragers to our world, to our oikos, to the places that we frequent, and also be that to our church sacrificially, even if it costs our time, our money, our resources, even you know, because ministry is not convenient. What would it be like if we started doing that? Amazing. Yeah. Right. Yeah. So. Yeah, for um, sure. You know, I, I, I would just like to pray over the people. This is my heart. I mean, that's why we have our main ministry of mine is encouraging people because that's what God showed me a long time ago is that he wanted me to be a Barnabas. And it isn't always fun to be a Barnabas because you're, you're, you do you take that secondary place and you're constantly promoting people, right? But it it's so rewarding yes. to watch people that you've encouraged, that you've build up that God's highlighted to you become who they're supposed to be and it's kind of like it's like a coach to a let's say a, a, a gymnast who they're coaching and they're encouraging come on you can do this you do it and then they they win the Olympic gold medal yeah you know yeah. you see the you see the coach's face but the person who stands on the podium yeah is the person that they've encouraged to yeah. become who they're supposed to be yeah so I want to pray for you. Uh, right now, in the name of Jesus. Father, I just thank you for this word that you gave Bill and how he brought it forth. And I pray that each person would go and listen to the original message, which is going to be on this same channel and in the website, and get the whole story from the beginning, because it was so powerful how it, it came across. And I ask God that you would speak to them how they're supposed to be a part of this encouragement team and that you would allow them to feel the joy when they are part of that team and they're watching people who are being yanked up out of the doldrums and out of depression and out of despair and anxiety and, and, and encouraged into their purpose in God. And as they meet God and as they are reconciled back to the Father and they feel the presence of God in their life, and, and Lord, that that would just become their joy because happiness is fleeting, but joy is knowing that you're fulfilling your purpose. So Father, I ask that you would speak to them right now and that you would give them dreams in the night, Lord, mm-hmm. and visions of what it would be like if they were true encouragers, Barnabases. And that God, that this thing would spread like wildfire. Yeah. It would spread like a virus, on, you know, a viral, a viral video on the web. Not this particular video, but I'm saying that this concept would start becoming something that each church would embrace and that you would you would grab pastors' hearts and that they would realize that this is what the true mission of the church is. That's why they sent Barnabas out first to this new movement of God. And that, Lord, that you would blow into this and the yeah. Holy Spirit would guide these each person here into, into the truth. And that, Lord, that you would just bless these people and you'd keep them and you'd let your face shine upon them and you be gracious unto them and give them your peace, your shalom. Nothing lacking, nothing broken in their lives. In Jesus' name, amen. 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 So I encourage you to go to our encouragingpeople.com website. You'll see all kinds of other videos on different subjects like this. A lot of Pastor Bill, because I love Pastor Bill's preaching and teaching. And uh, you may be encouraged there. And there's also some things that, that I've done and my wife Heidi has done. And you'll find a lot of great stuff there. So Please go there and please, if this has been has been something that you that has really encouraged you, uh, share it with other people. Just send them a, a, a link to the video and share it with them because you don't know. You may bring somebody, uh, you may encourage somebody and bring them out of the doldrums and make them into the next Timothy or the next Paul or the next Titus or the next Peter or the next John, uh, the next Billy Graham. So um, just remember, always remember, you are God's favorite. This has been Harvest Time with Pastor Bill Baldwin, brought to you by Encouraging People. For more videos and resources like this, please subscribe to this channel and go to our website at encouragingpeople.com.